Today, I will be reading Groundhog Night by Julius Sampson. It was February 2nd in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Beneath the snow-covered ground in a warm chamber, there laid a furry bundle snoring the winter away. His name was Phil, and he was exceptionally tired this hibernation season. His black, glistening eyes slivered open just a tad to see daylight spilling down into his hole. Just a few more minutes, he thought, then yawned, rolled over, and went back to sleep. It only felt like minutes later when he yawned again and stretched his arms out. But when he looked at the opening of his burrow, he realized no light was there. He peeked his head out to see a sliver of moon in the partially cloudy sky. Oh no, he whispered. I slept the whole day. He hopped up and peered around at the ground, but it was too dark to see his shadow. He stamped his foot in the dirt, frustrated. How would he know now if spring was coming? He had slept through the most important day. He had slept through Groundhog's Day. He still felt so tired, but he had to know if anyone had seen their shadow that day. He ran to a small wooden coop with a ramp leading up to its sliding door. He scurried up the ramp and scratched a bit at the panels, but he only heard a bit of cooing inside. He nudged the door with his nose and peeked his head inside. A flock of feathery hens nuzzled together, most of them already asleep. But one lifted her head. Phil, she clucked. Beth, I- I'm sorry to disturb you like this. Uh, I-, I just need to know, did you see your shadow today? He whispered. Nope, she clucked again. I was outside all day in the dirt mound scratching for bugs and I didn't see my shadow once. I guess that means we're getting an early spring, right? He smiled, thanked her, and slid the door closed again. He walked down the ramp, feeling relieved that he could go back to bed. But then, he gazed over at the dirt mound. His heart sank. The mound was under the cover of an angled roof. He realized she was in the shade all day and wouldn't have seen her shadow anyway. Once again, he was uncertain about the next six weeks and whether or not he should settle back down to continue his hibernation. He noticed a light streaming the snow from a warm cottage window. He cautiously pushed through a small swinging door he had seen his friend Lexi use countless times. He knew he wasn't supposed to go inside, but he was desperate. He crept along the soft carpet to the blazing fireplace, making sure no people were in sight. He whispered. A sleek black cat lifted her head from cleaning a pile of kittens beneath her who squirmed in a plush pillow. Phil, what are you doing up this hour? She mewed. I overslept today, he confided. Oh, Phil, a groundhog sleeping through Groundhog's Day? I know, he blushed and hung his head. Lexi, did you see your shadow today? Oh, yes, she mewed. I've seen it all day. In fact, there it is. Phil glanced behind Lexi and saw her shadow dancing across the cabinets. He realized it was the flames of the warm hearth and not the sun that caused her shadow to move all about. His smile faded. You've been in here all day? Of course, I can't leave my little ones just yet, she replied. Phil slunk back outside sadly. He was beginning to think he would never know. In truth, he didn't know why he was asking his friends. They weren't groundhogs. Their shadows probably didn't even work for predicting the weather. A gust of frosty night wind made him shiver when he came upon a scratching sound that resounded from an unfamiliar hole in the ground. 
Hello? Phil's voice echoed down the tunnel. A very old badger peeked his head out of the hole. Who are you? came the badger's gruff but warm voice. Before Phil could answer, the badger chuckled. I know you, you're Punksy Phil. You missed the ceremony today. Phil dropped his ears back and hung his head. Then it occurred to him, if this badger knew that, and he must have been outside today. His ears perked up. You were awake today? Did, did you see your shadow? Well, I wasn't supposed to be awake, he replied, agitated. I'm not supposed to get up until evening, but a stampede of people tore through here looking for you. Look what they did to my set. He gestured toward the trampled hole in the ground. I'm sorry. Phil dropped his head again. The badger's brows angled in pity for the little groundhog. Oh, it's all right. He gestured for Phil to sit with him. The answer you're looking for is, yes, I did see my shadow today. We're in for six more weeks of winter. But what if it's only the groundhog's shadow that works? Phil worried aloud. Well, you can trust my shadow, because I'm a badger. Phil cocked his head confused. The badger smiled. My ancestors settled here in Puxatawney with the early settlers in the 1800s from Germany. That's where the tradition came from. Only back then it was badgers, not groundhogs. Then why isn't it called Badger Day? Phil asked. He chuckled again. Well, there weren't many living here. There was an old poem. Now let me think. He scratched his head, trying to remember. Ah, yes. On Candlemas Day, Badger looks from its hole. And if it sees both clouds and snow, it knows warm winds soon will blow. If it sees bright sun in the sky, winter winds won't soon die. Phil worried about trusting the badger the whole way home. But then, the sun beamed over the horizon and he saw his shadow. Now, he knew that the old badger spoke the truth. So he cuddled up warmly and went back to sleep. The End